Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing Tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanigi and what we're doing today is we got you out here on the lake and we're talking about fishing spoons for stocked trout in lakes and ponds. So stay tuned today you guys, we're going to go over size, color, rod, reel, line, everything you need to know to go out and catch fish on these beautiful little spoons here. So we're gonna talk about our stick here. What I got in my hands is the Okuma Guide Select Pro. It is a two to six pound line rating, which is perfect for this. You want that good sensitive tip so that you can cast a long ways. With these spoons, they don't always come in really heavy sizes, so being able to have that light line and a flexible rod allows you to really get that thing out there. So what I have on here for a reel is the RTX 30S made by Okuma as well. This is the perfect because it has a nice little bit of line pickup. Uh, as well as the amount of line you can put on this thing. If you do hook a big fish on these big, these you know big aggressive spoons like we have here, there's odds are that they're going to take a lot of line from you. So having a lot of line on that reel is, is very, very crucial so that you don't lose a fish of a lifetime. So what I have on here is a 10 pound P line braid. Why I'm using the 10 pound is because of how nicely it comes off the spool. That lighter line is going to be a lot easier to cast when using smaller gear that you're going to be using to catch these trout in these lakes and ponds or, or even creeks and rivers. So 10 pound braided line is what I like to use right on here. And what I'm doing after that, I'm running that up through my guides and all the way down to a little snap swivel here. Off of that snap swivel, I'm putting the spoon. Some of the spoon styles, you don't need to have that snap swivel. You're actually gonna be not fishing correctly if you do have it. What I'm, why I have it on here is because it allows that blade, being that it's a nice light blade, to move around by itself just by me reeling in rather than me giving it action with the rod tip, which I'll show you here in just a minute as we start explaining how to fish these spoons. So, line all the way down to the swivel, down right to that spoon, and that's how we're gonna start this setup. So what I'm gonna go over to next here is the different variations of spoons that we have here on the market, and everybody can go find just about any, uh, any tackle store that there is. What I have here on the left side is what we'd call a cast master. These are a very great spoon and one of the most popular, I'd say, for fishing from the bank for these trout because of the weight and the ability to cast a long ways and cover more water in these lakes and ponds like this. So next to it, we have your, your old school daredevil style, that red and white's a, a very classic color to go after these trout with. You got a very hot chartreuse for fishing certain different kinds of water color. You never go wrong with silver. And then onto the very many, many customized variations of these of these spoons that you can make but really my favorites kind of come down to the cast masters whether you have the orange or the blue or the green they're they allow you to cast a long ways but there's a different way of fishing those than there is fishing these normal spoons so we'll talk about that once we hit the lake here but these are really some of my favorite and ones that you should have in your box if you're gonna try to use these spoons so what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna step out here on the lake and I'm gonna actually show you guys how to break it down and actually how to identify a place that you'd want to throw a, a spoon Really the spoon is a great effective tool because you can present it a lot slower than you could any other kind of lure that you're casting. The spoon doesn't take as much action or as much speed and reeling to get that nice flopping motion that it needs to you know, entice a bite. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take this spoon, I'm gonna cast it out here and I'm gonna switch up and show you guys how to fish a cast master, which is gonna be a little bit different method. So what I'm gonna do when I start fishing again, just like any other kind of hardware fishing, I'm gonna make sure to cover the water. I'm not gonna just make one cast out in the middle of the lake and expect that to be going in front of a lot of fish. What the trout do in these lakes and ponds is they kind of cruise. When they are feeding and when the bite is on, these fish just swim laps around these lakes looking for food. And what happens is you get their, their eyesight on something from a long ways away like these spoons and you attract them to swim your way. So casting in a bunch of different directions is crucial in order to cover more water and catch more fish. So what I'm gonna do to start is I'm gonna start casting out at about a 45 degree angle towards the other side of the lake and work my way counterclockwise back across here. You can go whichever way your preference is, but I'm gonna start by ca casting right out here to the right. I'm gonna hit, let that hit the water, and because these aren't super heavy, you're gonna wanna let these, these spoons, the thinner spoons, sink a little further. As I bring that in, I'm just gonna do a, a nice steady reel, just fast enough that I can see my tip moving. You see how that little bit of vibration is happening on my tip, and that's showing me that that spoon is flopping back and forth giving that nice dying motion. What you don't want with that spoon is it not spinning or not moving at all, not flapping its tail at all. What happens if you're not casting fat or reeling fast enough, you'll get this spoon kind of catching an edge and it won't actually flop for you. You need to get that right amount of speed so that it does that really hard flop 
and allows that spoon to flop back and forth and give that vibration and kind of send out that signal to those fish. So as I've cast it to the right, I'm gonna go straight out here, getting it as far as I can, and that 10 pound casts so nice off of that reel. I'm gonna let that sink all the way to the bottom, probably a three or four count, it's pretty deep out there. And again, I'm just gonna go a nice steady reel right back in. And what will happen is at times if you feel these fish chase you and bite that spoon as it's coming back in, you don't want to stop reeling or reel any faster. You want to keep it right on that same pace. And what that's going to do is that fish will follow and follow and follow until it gets to a point where it knows it doesn't have any more time and it'll come grab that spoon right before it gets to the bank, sometimes even right in front of you. So now that I've made that middle cast, I'm going to go out here to the left, really whip that bad boy out there, let her sink on down. and then start bringing it back in. So after this cast, I'm actually gonna take this spoon off and I'm gonna show you guys how to fish one other type of spoon that really is probably the best that I've found from fishing for the bank at least. These spoons that I have on here work great trolling from the boat uh, if you're lucky enough to have a boat and get out there and, and move back and forth on the lake. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab this cast master which I'm actually gonna tie right to my line. So I'm cutting off this swivel here. I got just my braided line now, and I'm gonna take the cast master that's stuck to me inside here, and I'm gonna tie, this thing has that little ring right on top of it there. So I'm actually gonna tie the braid right to that ring, and that's actually gonna allow that, that spoon to fish correctly as it comes back in. Now the main difference that we're gonna see with when I start fishing this cast master, one is that I'm casting a lot further. I'll get it, heck, darn near all the way across the lake if I try hard enough. But really, I'm gonna give it a lot more action with the rod. You're gonna have to help this, this spoon move. If you just reel it straight in, you get this wagging motion, but you don't get the really aggressive falling and flashing that you get if you're using your rod tip to give it a little bit of a presentation. So I'm gonna go straight out on this one just to avoid getting any snags. Oh yeah. Ooh, that was a good one. So from here, I'm gonna let that thing sink down, which won't take quite as long because it's a little bit bigger. But as I bring this in, you can give it a little bit more motion and give yourself a little bit more flash with that spoon as it comes back in. So I'm reeling about the same pace as I was before, but I'm moving my tip three to four inches each time as I'm making a full crank to give that spoon a little bit more flair. You can do this with any style of spoon, but with these cast masters, you get a little bit more of an aggressive presentation. So keep that in mind. These work really great, again, especially if you're casting a long ways and you need to fish a spot where you really can't move around a lot. You can fish you know, counterclockwise or clockwise, back and forth, whatever radius you want, and get really good presentations. And it's a great way to attract the very aggressive trout. What the, the hardware does is it allows you to quickly fish through an area without having to set your gear out and wait for it and wait for a bite. You can entice that bite by different ways of casting and, and different ways of bringing those spinners and the spoons in to attract a bite. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. I hope you learned a lot on this little video. If you have any questions, be sure and comment below. We wanna hear any questions and we can answer them all in the comment string. So don't forget to comment, like and share this out there so all these other people that wanna learn how to trout fish can. Be sure and subscribe to this page so you can see all the new videos we have coming out all the time. And thank you so much for tuning in, guys. We'll see you out there on the lake.